This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Blaine Fowler. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Monday, January 31st. Thanks for being here. February tomorrow, what? Apparently, uh, Blaine, it's our fault. The BYU men's hoops lost two last week. I don't know why you say our. It's yours. Oh, me specifically? Yeah, no, it wasn't. Like, I <laughs> I was talking to Spencer. I leave this. for a couple days and we no, lose No, it's two? not. Out. No, I'm, I'm part of your team. I'm always part of your team. Yeah, but, yeah. But I'm not the one that tweeted out that um, you, you said, it's this is it. This is the tweet. Like, you had to say that. And, and you said, Ken Palm gives BYU 55% chance of sweeping Santa Clara Pacific. Yeah, Cougar so, Stats put that out. And then I said, that's it. Yeah, you said, that's it. So I feel like it's when a free throw shooter steps up to the line and like, and in a game, and I say, "Oh, this guy, this guy's a ninety-four percent free throw shooter," well, and he clanks it off the right. back of the iron. Do you believe in uh, announcer jinx, um, or are you Evan McPherson of the Cincinnati Bengals? Who I'm assuming I didn't hear yesterday whether he said this, but in the uh, week prior, he said, "Man, I can't believe we're going to the AFC Championship game." Before he kicked the game winner. Yeah, that, <laughs> there's that end of it too. I'm, that okay. just said he was loose. He, he was, was loose. loose. That's okay. all it said. Uh, at SKBYU, whose name is Spencer on this, so maybe it was Spencer Linton, um, a burner account. I blame this tweet, pointing back at me. Okay, and then then there's this. Jason actually just, pit, you know, uh, at seat Eric on Twitter, putting this L on J, uh, Jason Shepard. He clearly said BYU would not lose on BYU SN yesterday. That was Saturday. So they, everybody Friday. feels like like this so show. it's our so, fault. So it is. Yeah. I, I guess I... Yeah. We'll I'm part of I'm part of us. We're us. We're we, the team. You know, so what? I got to live with what you guys ex- say. Ex- <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> here's our show lineup: Men's Hoops lose at Pacific. Ugh. The Cougars on the bubble now. Uh, will they still be the two seed? Plus, look at a loaded week against San Francisco and Gonzaga at home. My goodness, Tyler Haas will break it down. Paisler Harding joins the show, fresh off a 30 piece against the Dons. Holy shnikes! Huge road trip at Portland and Gonzaga for the ladies. Plus, it doesn't go well for Cougars in the NFL. The athletic couple Twitter convo you've got to see, and Jimmer said it back to China. But first, today's headlines. Let's start with a rough week on the road. We gotta start with the negative, right? For men's hoops, they dropped a, a Q4, a quad four game, brutal on the road to Pacific, 76-73 game. They had no business losing, and they lost consecutive regular season games for the first time under Mark Pope. Um, with those losses to Santa Clara and Pacific on the road. Um, next up versus San Francisco on Thursday and home again uh, against Gonzaga on Saturday. So this is a tough week and an important week for the BYU men's basketball team. Break it down coming up. Number 16 women's hoops destroys San Francisco 99-58 thanks to 30 from Paisley Harding. My goodness. Cougs are up to nine in the net today. How about that? Biggest set of games of the season at Portland and Gonzaga this week. New AP poll rankings come out in an hour. When BYU was ranked, it is the most consecutive weeks in a row BYU's been ranked in program history. Congratulations. Yeah, fantastic. They are rolling and playing big time. Cougars in the NFL. Not such a great week for Cougars in the NFL. you the good ones. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, Jerem decides who's going to do what, and I get all the I negative do? stuff. So, I didn't know that. So Daniel Sorensen, one tackle and a 24-27 overtime loss for the Chiefs. Um, Fred Warner, 10 tackles, one tackle for a loss. He had a great game, but in a 17-20 loss uh, for the Niners. No players will be in the Super Bowl representing BYU this season. More coaches, sad. yeah. Yeah, it's really, really sad. Bummer. I did see Matt Bushman just hanging out in the box there. Yeah, that was cool. on there. That's yeah. cool. So, How much did Matt get paid? Just chill. That's pretty cool. It's good. It's a good that's, gig. That's, it's that's, a good gig if you can get it. If you can get it. Number eight, men's volleyball beats Mount Olive in four Saturday. Thanks to 22 kills from freshman Mix Romanus. 23 Friday or Thursday, 22 on Saturday. Cougars host Ball State Friday and Saturday. Ball State on Saturday took down number one Hawaii. So this is going to yeah, be yeah. a fun matchup coming up Friday and Saturday. This is a big one. Okay, now we get something positive to talk about. Jimmer's Finally. heading back to China. He's rejoining the Shanghai Sharks after missing the first four months of play due to all the COVID-19 restrictions over there. Um, he'll play the final 10 games of the regular season and be there in the playoffs for the Shanghai Sharks. They're currently in second place in the CBA, so they're, they've are they got a playoff spot. So is, is he enough to elevate them and win a championship, perhaps? And, yes, they've yeah. gone to the playoffs with Jimmers, the, the alpha, but they didn't advance. So what will they do with him? Well, that's, and, he, that's and he's... He's back. He's he's a household name in Shanghai. I'm going to miss him on TikTok, though. Yeah. That's oh, the church yeah. giving us pointers. Absolutely. Uh, maybe he can still do that in China. 
Number 21, Gymnastics, beats Utah State in the home opener, posting a 196.775. Woo, it's good. As seen on BYU TV, Sadie Minor Van Tassel won the all-around career best 39.425. Cougars host Boise State Saturday, 2 Eastern time. Look at the reaction of the team. I love that. Fun stuff. And track and field continues to roll. Men's and women's track and field competed at the UW Invitational on Saturday. UW. Prep- yeah, UW. UW. Did you say UW? I would, d- yeah, not UW. UW. The Huskies. <laughs> so, UW, Washington. You beat them in 80. So, okay. Yes, we did. We, we, we yeah, spanked yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, they, they competed in track and field at UW um, on Saturday in preparation to qualify for nationals. Uh, Aiden Troutner ran, ran a 4 four-minute mile. Um, good for number nine all-time at BYU. And Courtney Wayman sets the number six all-time collegiate record in the 3,000 meters with an 8.50.05 at the Milrose Games on Saturday. Represent BYU track man. Now, question, is she uh, is she an amateur? Is that a collegiate record? I think she's a pro now. I don't know. How does that? But it, I don't know if she's a pro in one and not the other, meaning cross-country track. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know. I know a couple of them just signed uh, to be professional. That's pretty cool. Swim and Dive hosted Utah for the last meet, home meet of the season. Men stayed undefeated. This week, Dive's at Air Force, and the swimmers are preparing for the MPSF Championships in California in two and a half weeks. And uh, men's and women's tennis. Men's tennis beats Grand Canyon 6-1. Next up, they're home against Boise State on Friday. So Boise State coming to town for a couple of sports this weekend. And women's tennis falls 0-4 to San Diego on uh, the last day of the ITA kickoff weekend. Next up, doubleheader, home opener versus Boise State and Dixie State on Saturday. New AP pull out, uh, zero votes for BYU. Had they won both, they probably would have been in. So that's a bummer. Uh, and Gonzaga of note is number two. Last time BYU beat Gonzaga, what were they? Number two. Number two. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Okay, after losses at Santa Clara, now Pacific, BYU 17-6, 5-3 in the WCC. First back-to-back losses in the regular season under Mark Pope. First uh, quad three or quad four under, uh, you know, Mark Pope lost. It took two plus years. Eh. Okay, here's the question we're going to discuss. Do you believe BYU will still get the two seed in Vegas at the West Coast Conference Tournament? I, th- I think they, I think they still will. And and the reason I started looking at the schedules because the St. Mary's that they're they're chasing right. And and mind you, I realized they just went out. Santa Clara is not an awful, awful loss on the road. Right. So it's surprising. Right. But, but Pacific's just – it's just a terrible loss. Yes. It, it, let's just call it what it is. It's They're on nice. a seven-game losing streak. And, and BYU just didn't figure out how to play with any intensity till the end of the game, and then they almost go back and win it. They played in that – with half that intensity all game, they blow that team out. So I think mm. they're going to find themselves, though. And, and remember, St. Mary's has already had – three games postponed because of COVID. Yeah. So I'm not sure they're going to make all of those up. I think it's going to come right down to the wire, and BYU's either going to win the tiebreaker to take the two seed with St. Mary's by virtue of head-to-head play, yeah. or maybe by winning percentage. They may end up with the same number of losses in the loss column, but because of winning percentage, because BYU's only had one game canceled, we yeah. don't know whether they'll make that up against Portland. And that's the first thing they right. look so, at is So they could, it could be another game that makes a difference. I don't know that St. Mary's is going to get all three of those games rescheduled. So so we'll, we'll see. I believe that they're going to find themselves because I think it's easier to find defense and rebounding, which is what they lost this last week, than it is to figure out how to get back scoring big time. I think they'll find their defense and their rebounding. This week's a rough week. They need a split this week. If they split split this week, I believe they'll be the two seed when it comes to WCC tournament time. And naturally, I'd think San Francisco win Thursday and then uh, Saturday Gonzaga. A yeah. loss, unless you pull off this massive upset. That'd be amazing. That, yeah. That'd be great. If you, if you go sweep this week? <laughs> if you go sweep this then, week, then, wait, we, we took, don't care about we, we last took, week. We took the bar from here, right? Yeah. And now we're like, okay, now the bar's here. Now they, if they sweep this week, we're like, oh, that was a giant aberration. This is the bar now, right? Yes, because what we hope is that last week was just an off week and not the start of something uh, worse because I said a few weeks ago, I felt like BYU was overachieving Blaine. They were figuring out to their credit how to win without Gavin Baxter and Richard Harward. And they were doing it with the senior backcourt and an excellent role players, great defense rebounding, like you talked about. So uh, yeah, that quad four showed up. The, the, trust has been broken a little bit mm-hmm. here. 
with this group because the last two years we didn't have a single one of those. Not a single one. So it was like, oh, you know what BYU doesn't do? They don't have a bad loss. So that means BYU is going to be a tourney team. BYU is still going to be a tourney team. And I, I'm with you. I still think they get the two seed. But it's going to be a challenge because you have San Francisco, you have Gonzaga, you have at St. Mary's. But then you finish four of the last five with LMU Pepperdine, Gonzaga, or uh, sorry, there's uh, St. Mary's, LMU Pepperdine. Right. So there's ho- you hope you win all four of those, and then you probably need to uh, you know hold serve with San Francisco at home. And then that at, at St. Mary's game, you can't drop another at right, Pacific right. time. No, no. You no. cannot. Right. If you want the two seed. A reminder, the two seed gets all the way to the semifinal. Yeah. The, the margin for error is really, really small now. As a result of last week, yes. And remember, St. Mary's is five and one in league right now, and BYU is is five and three, so they're two games behind. St. Mary's should be four and two. Right. They right. were down twenty three to San Francisco and came back and yeah. won. Yeah. So second biggest comeback in the WCC since BYU Iona. That's right. So they showed some, they show some great toughness there, but but remember, St. Mary's still has to play Gonzaga twice. Yes. BYU only has to play them once. They have yes. to play BYU again. Mm-hmm. So you have a head to head there. That's why I feel like this thing will level out. Yes. So Thursday <laughs> is huge that way because BYU, BYU's got to beat San Francisco Thursday. Right. If BYU doesn't, I'm going, eh, probably the three. Yeah. And I'm three and, or four. And here's the thing with San Francisco, they have the same number of losses. They're they're four and three, right? So they're, they're they're the same in the loss column as BYU. I didn't even mention them because yeah. If, if if BYU's not the two. They might be the four. Well, here and, and here, it isn't just two or three; it's two or because they drop all the way to the four. And here's the thing: two or three doesn't really matter as it pertains to seeding. Really, you're going to m- end up in that. Uh, you know, ho- you hope semifinal. You just had you would have to win a quarterfinal to get there. Whereas the two, you're the semifinal sitting there. But if you want to be comfortably in the bracket, BYU, you've got to win Thursday. Yep. And you can't lose to LMU and Pepperdine. You don't have to win at St. Mary's, I don't think. But if you beat San Francisco. Uh, you're probably in a pretty good spot to make yeah. the tourney. And I would rather be a 10 or 11 than 8 or 9, honestly. Right. So I'm not that worried about BYU in the NCAA tournament. But it is concerning because what we don't want to happen here, Blaine, is see cracks in the dam with the, the Santa Clara and Pacific losses. What we want to see is, nope, BYU shorted up. A couple of stats here uh, of note. BYU owned 4 when giving up 76-plus. Right. So that's concerning. Can't The, the offense can't overcome that um it, it would appear sometimes and four and five when giving up 70 plus that's a concerning number this team's offense is good but it's not great the defense is really good but there's been a few few cracks as we mentioned right there yeah and, and mark pope talked about um after this week when when he uh, met with the press his first comment was we just lost our edge defensively and mm-hmm. and, he, and he felt like they were playing at an elite level defensively and rebounding. Yeah. And, and frankly, the, the opposing coaches that I have talked to in shoot-arounds getting ready to do the games we've done this season, they always start with that. Mm. Man, BYU's so different. They're really good defensively, and man, can they rebound. We're going to have to try to compete on the boards. Over and over again, I've heard that all year long. Yeah. And then that went away last week. To me, that's a fixable thing, right? So More fixable than shooting. Yeah, because sometimes shooting just comes and goes. And, and my feeling why, yeah. why I thought BYU was going to coast into that number two spot was I thought, well, they can go on the road and not shoot it well but still win because they're that good defensively. Yes, if they had come home with a pair of wins, yeah, yeah then you're, huge you're disappointment that for some reason their defense and their rebounding didn't travel. Yeah, And a lot of it was um, a lack of, of good rotations, which means a lack of communication on the back line. Too many people getting to the rim and getting easy shots. Mm. Now, mind you, BYU missed some wide open shots because they were doubling Barcelo that guys need to knock down. But but that's BYU's whole identity up to this point in the season was doesn't really matter whether we knock those shots down. What matters is we get every guy down, every other team down the floor gets a one and done because we're rebounding the ball. Yes. We're getting second opportunities. Yes. We don't have to shoot a great percentage, and we'll defend the heck out of people. And then they lost that identity last week. They got to get that back. But I feel like that's something you can get back. You have to get it Thursday. Yep. They huge, got huge week with San Francisco and Gonzaga in town Thursday and Saturday. Okay, it's time for our resume update. Net down four from 29 to 33. Still a good number. As long as you're top 40, feeling good. If you're in the, inside the top 30, like, you're almost guaranteed to be in. Um, guaranteed. It's either guaranteed or it's not. Okay, you're not guaranteed. Ken Palm, 28. It's down five. So didn't hurt BYU a ton. Still top 30. Uh, team rankings went down significantly, like 23% chance. Okay? That was a, that was a big one. Rothstein still has BYU 33rd. Okay? And as we mentioned, uh, first quad four loss of the Mark Pope here. I don't think it slides up to quad two. Pacific's not going to be great. It, surpri- so, it we'll surprised stop. me actually when the when we saw these these uh, uh, you know the net rankings and the Ken Palm and all that. 
that that loss didn't hurt him worse than Isn't it, it did. Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice? Because pre-net, we we're sitting on RPI, and there weren't all these metrics to yeah. really quantify, like, how bad of a loss was that? Santa Clara, we would have freaked out yeah. like it was specific in years past, but we're like, no, quad two. It's, yeah. a, it's fine. Yeah. Hey, I, Pacific, I, though, is bad. Hey, I'm not going to lie. I kind of freaked out at Pacific. <laughs> but but then I, I, oh, I kind sure. of got a little Pacific, bit off the yes. edge because I'm just like, wow, well, wait a minute. that Oh, because it didn't affect It didn't affect kill him as much as I thought numbers. it was going to affect those numbers. Now, if you keep going that direction, you no, get yeah. another LMU. What Pepperdine, concerns me is, now you're in trouble. is this a trend? And if right. it's a trend, if they've really lost their edge defensively, then it's a problem. So Huge week. Huge week. Our right. question of the day. Do you believe a two seed in the WCC tourney is still possible for BYU men's hoops? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. Is it meta yet for Facebook? No. That's, is that no, correct? Not no, not yet. Okay, first response, that Tricky Tanner. No, this team is destined for a three or four seed. Also... Shep guaranteed a victory over Pacific. What happened? <laughs> Destined. Uh. Well, Tricky Tanner is a half full guy. Destined. Like they no, can't, he's a half empty guy. Like they can't do anything about it. They're <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't, they don't. I don't know, man. Um, obviously, you hope for a two. Not a huge difference with a three. If BYU is the four, now they're on the bubble. Yeah. Now they're on the bubble. Yeah, that's, right? that's right now they're not. Well, is, we'll see with Lenardi. Was last week a trend or is it an aberration? Hopefully, aberration. Aberration, right? hopefully. So. Yeah. All right, coming up, we got a husbands versus wives three on three matchup. Who's your favorite? And Tyler Haas on what now for the Cougars? He's got the answers. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. And now, introducing your Mountain America All-Stars. Out of BYU, Alex, Alex Barcelo and Shaylee Gonzalez. Thanks for the warm welcome. So, is this where we get the BYU card? But of course. The only place you can. This is really cool. Yeah, but mine's better. No way. Get your BYU <laughs> card from Mountain America today. It's perfect for students, alumni, and super fans. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I, I struggle with this or this, and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow for BYU basketball with Mark Pope as the coach and Greg Rebell look ahead to a big week for BYU hoops. It's tomorrow, 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app. The Deep Blue is a little different. It's a game day experience with Alex Barcel. It's a pretty cool behind the scenes look. Check it out. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. Jerem Jordan alongside Blaine Fowler. Let's bring in our first guest of the day, the all-time leading scorer at BYU, the BYU TV countdown to kickoff, uh, tip-off analyst with me or Dave or Spencer or whoever's hosting that day. He is Tyler Haas. Tyler, welcome to the program, man. Hey, thanks. Always good to be on with you guys. And welcome to the when BYU loses to, we got to talk to somebody. So, Ty, we want to talk to you about this because, hey, that was a rough weekend, man, uh, losing near the buzzer against Santa Clara and then 
At Pacific, uh, the first quad three or four loss under Mark Pope, back-to-back losses now in the regular season. So what was your perspective on what happened with BYU men's hoops over the weekend? Yeah, I mean, both games, tough ones to to swallow. Um, I think, you know, my my initial reaction to, to both games were, hey, we, we played really well offensively. I mean, both games, BYU shot the ball really well. Um, but uncharacteristic of this group, there were a lot of uh, defensive lapses and, you know, guys getting right to the rim, um, you know, big momentum shifts on that end of the floor, which we haven't really seen all season, no matter who they have played. And just just really, really tough ones emotionally as a, as a fan to, to swallow. And um, but, you know, this is this is part of part of a, a season for for any team and there are tough moments and tough losses and you know it's like coach pope always talks about it's it's about how you respond and so um still you know even though it was a gut punch there's still a lot to play for and i think um uh, this 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 team's going to regroup Ty, they, it's interesting. You, you go right to the defensive side of things, and, and Mark Pope also went there in his post-game interviews uh, and referring to both games last week saying, hey, it's so uncharacteristic of us. We've hung our hat on defense and rebounding all season long, so to not do that on the road was surprising. How, how does that happen? You expect teams um, to maybe have an off-shooting night, but, but isn't defense mm-hmm. and rebounding all about effort? And, and so how all of a sudden in two games did they regress so, uh, so backward in terms of defense and rebounding? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. You know, I've, I've tried to think uh, kind of what happened as well. And, you know, sometimes in both those games, I feel like they got up to great starts offensively. And, you know, the, the teams that I played on, we weren't always the best defensively. And sometimes – when we got off to a really good start and we saw a couple of shots go in, sometimes there's a tendency to relax on the defensive end because you feel like everything is just going right on the other end of the floor. And, you know, maybe that's something that, that happens, um, just a, a mental lapse, um, thinking that all is well, all it, we're, we're going to, you know, steamroll these teams like, like other conference games so far. And, that just can't happen. You can't lose your focus um, on on the things that you can control, right? You can't always control shots that are going in, but defensively, um, you got to stay locked into the scout. Got to stay locked into defensive principles. You know, I thought there were just just mental errors on the defensive end and and rebounding, right? I, I mean, these guys always talk about having strong gaps, strong being, you know just playing together defensively and and they didn't do that guys got right to the rim over and over and over again and um and just went right at our bigs inside uh both games and and so there's definitely some things to tighten up on that end of the floor we're talking to tyler haas on BYU sports nation tyler a couple of weeks ago i felt like BYU was probably two games better than it should have been. It figured out ways to win a couple of games that normally probably would have lost. Now BYU loses a pair and, and probably is where they probably should have been. It should is an interesting word there. But without Gavin Baxter and Richard Harward, this team was doing amazing things. Now we've had a, game, a couple of games where it was like, like we've talked about with defense and rebounding. Do you feel like this team was overachieving a little bit and now they regressed to the mean or do you feel otherwise? Um, you know, I feel like... I feel like they were, I don't know, probably a little bit of both in a way. Uh, they they were definitely overachieving. I think they exceeded expectations, especially after Baxter and, and Harward go out. I mean, you're expecting big things out of, out of freshmen inside, and um, the team dynamic and roles had to change. And, and so I, def- I definitely think they exceeded expectations there. Um, but these two games were winnable games, and they should have, they should have been won, and they played well enough to win. Um, but they didn't take care of the things uh, that that they could control. The defensive side of the ball, rebounding. There were just mental errors, mental lapses that 
um, you know, BYU was the better team in both of those games. And uh, but it's about it's about responding now. And there's still a lot to play for. And what I think BYU's challenge going forward is just emotionally dealing with this. Right. I, I don't think I don't think the house is on fire, per se, um, as, as it may feel. I mean, it, it's hard walking around on campus and talking to people and going to church on Sunday. It, it, it feels it will feel like the house is on fire. I remember my my junior year, you know, we had a great team. And right in the middle of that season, we we lost to Utah and Oregon. And then we started out conference losing to who was Pepperdine and LMU. LMU. Yeah. yeah. We had four straight losses, and I remember going to church, and, like, these are neighbors. These people I grew up with, and they're like, hey, Ty, you know, hey, <laughs> we'll get them next year. You got it next season. Yeah, I'm like, we still have 20 games left to play. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? And so I think the challenge for this group is to is emotionally, right? How do we, you know, push the reset button and figure out how to – to move on because I really don't feel like the house is on fire. These are things that can be fixed and, and BYU is, is definitely as good as uh, is advertised. So, so Tyler, I want to talk to you a little bit about Alex Barcelo, especially this week. So obviously he was getting with Jeremy and I call it the Tyler Hawes treatment, right? Since uh, you're the all time leading scorer, lots of games, the entire defense was bent on stopping you. You're getting doubled all the time. Is particularly in that Pacific game, Alex is getting doubled 30 feet away from the basket. What's yep. it like to have to play through that? And what advice would you give to Alex? Because he may see a bunch of that moving forward. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, especially when teams are trying to beat you up. Like that's part of their their game plan is just to tire you out. Right. We're going to throw double and triple teams every time you come off a ball screen, every time you come off a down screen, you're seeing multiple bodies. Right. That that can get mentally tiring um, over the course of a game. And, you know, I I can remember almost every game in in conference, my my junior and senior year, just fighting with refs and really starting out the game kind of going <laughs> Hey, I know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. Are we on the same page here? You know, and there, there's all these games within the game that are happening, right? And and I think Alex is is has handled it really, really well so far, and he's committed to making the right basketball play. I I think that's that's the one piece of advice I would I would give him is hey, like be aggressive and attack and you know, keep playing your game that way, but make the right basketball play. And other guys have to step up, right? Other guys have to to be ready to knock down open shots and, and be ready to play. And you can't win the game by yourself, but uh, you have to keep that aggressive mentality. And I mean, that Santa Clara game, guys, he hit some shots that were amazing. I mean, a couple of his threes in transition, he very very little space and we don't usually see alex take those shots and and i mean it, it feels like to me he he has the right mindset and uh he's going to be fine moving forward i'm just imagining tyler uh you you having a conversation because you're like the nicest dude ever with the richards building <laughs> people and the wristbands <laughs> trying to get some work in pre-annex hey you're getting in my way after and now with the wcc <laughs> i'm just that's fun visual. Okay, massive week for BYU because BYU is staring down the barrel of 0-4 potentially if they don't bring it this week in the last two weeks, right? San Francisco Thursday night, huge game. Got to win that one, right? Um, and then Gonzaga on Saturday. If you get that one, great. If you don't, no one, no one, uh, you know, didn't expect that. So BYU's got to get San Francisco on Thursday. But do you still expect BYU to get the two seed in the WCC tournament? I think so. I mean, just just watching you know the first half of conference there are really good teams st mary's is a great team santa clara is a very talented skilled team uh gonzaga is obviously going to do what they do san francisco is tough like i i just feel like when it all comes down to it and and you know we we finish this second half out that byu is going to still be the the number two seed going in um, there's just too many games that will happen that I think 
think it's going to shake out to where to where BYU is the number two seed. And um, it, it is a huge week, though. And, you know, I, I think we could be having the same conversation next week and feeling great. Like, you know, if BYU goes in and, and finds a way to beat San Francisco and beats Gonzaga, I mean, mm. it, the season can change just like that. And that's the beauty of beauty of basketball right there. Yeah, if that happens, yeah, we'll just have yeah. you on just to celebrate. A, a, win, not even, not a, a, a win against the Zags changes everything. <laughs> I like really I like when we talked to Tyler. He he told us that they were 0 4 or they lost four in a row. I remember that. The house wasn't on fire then. This house isn't on fire. I'm feeling a little bit better about everything right now. Tyler, on on the, the, this show was on the radio only at that point. I said, You can kiss <laughs> you can kiss Tony goodbye if you're going to the NIT. I said it after that. Let me see. We, uh, we, we need you. We need you to do a little bit of uh, talking us off the ledge. We appreciate it, Tyler. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for being with us today, man. Thanks, brother. Always good to talk to you, brother. Yeah. Thanks so. for having me on, guys. Tyler Haas talking some sense into us. He certainly did. All right, coming up, all she does is drop thirty points on oh, opponents. Man. And join us on BYU Sports Nation. Paisley Harding will be in studio. This is baller, man. Mock draft season is here for the NFL. Tyler Algier lands in the latest one. Where and do we like it? This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. If you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in nonstop entry, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Friday, 8th-ranked BYU men's volleyball hosts 15th-ranked Ball State at the Smith Fieldhouse. Watch the match live on BYU TV and the app beginning at 9 Eastern. I'm guessing that might be a top-10 matchup because Ball State took down number one Hawaii on uh, Saturday, and then they actually play again tonight. So it's going to be a big yeah, week this, for Ball this, State. It's going to be fun. It'll fun be one. fun. He is Blaine. I am Jeremy. This is BYU Sports Nation. Don't forget, you can interact with the show. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Rent is presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling a global trade for a growing world. Let's start with football. Cam Meller has Tyler Algier as a third-round pick, going 63rd overall. If you had to say right now, right now, would you have Algier over or under a third-round pick? Based on the mocks that we've seen, probably under, hoping for like a fourth-round selection, although I feel like a third round would be awesome. Tyler's going to surprise some people. I really do. So if you're saying I can't go third and I have to go over or under that, I would probably go under, but I'm hoping... He climbs uh, into the third round, maybe late second. Here's what I think is going to happen with him. He's going to have a combine performance that people are going to go, whoa, we had no idea he was that fast. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, people underestimate how fast he is. 4-4 is the expectation. Yeah, he, he will run 4-4. 
and he may oh. slip to a 439 or a 438 at 230 plus pounds. That's incredible. And so, so I'm, I'm telling you, he runs that time. He jumps. Basically, we'll call it jump out of the gym, but it's yeah. wherever they're doing the combine. He jumps off the yeah. page. He, he has a 38 inch vertical or whatever it is, and people go, okay. Way underestimate him. I think he moves up. I think he's either an early third round, late second round. By the way, that would be Taysom Hill like. Yeah. To be that exactly. size. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 11 to 30, about. although Taysom's like 6'3 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, coming off a week where Ken Palm gave BYU a 6'2 uh, six for Taysom. Coming off a week where Ken Palm gave BYU a 55% chance to win both games. What do you make of these percentages? Cougar stats. Ken Palm gives BYU a 14% chance of sweeping the week, 27% chance of being swept. 59% chance of splitting. Well, first off, I think the 14% chance, I think it's generous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's because that <laughs> just doesn't, you know, nobody matches up with them except for the elite programs in the country right now because their bigs are so good and they're so deep. And right yeah. now, without without Richie Harward and without Gavin Baxter, um, we're so young up there. It's just, so f I think that's a little. Generous. 59% chance of splitting. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's because fair. of the low percent. Right. San Francisco's good. BYU barely won that game on the road. Like that. That no, is I think, a. I think that, them, man. I think. I think that's fair. Okay. This is from the when you're the second best athlete in the relationship department on Twitter, Blaine. Jaron Hall. Hey, uh, Connor Harding. I know what it's like to be the second best athlete in marriage too, my man. Paisley with a 30 piece. It's an honor to be in the same ward. BYU women's hoops is for real. Connor Harding. Well. To make us feel better, Jackson Clough, how does it feel to be the second best in your marriage? Jackson Clough, who's a former baseball player here, a double-A guy with the Nationals. I actually think it's more of an accomplishment that we somehow convinced our wives to marry us. He just married Michaela Coulihan a couple weeks ago. Jared Hall, realest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> who you got in a three-on-three -three pickup game? The guys or the girls there? Well, here's the thing. You Jared Hall's wife played soccer at uh, UU, by the way. Right. And, and, and Michaela's a professional soccer player. Yep, right. Your Orlando Pride. Um, and then and then Paisley is like playing lights out basketball right now. Coming up next second. One of the greatest shooters in, in women's history for BYU. Yeah. And man, she, she's playing great. So here's what I say. Three on three basketball, I still got the husbands. But if they go three on three soccer on yeah. small fields, it's not close. I bet you Paisley can play soccer really well. Oh, I'm sure. I bet you Paisley can do anything. I, I, I absolutely, and I'm not kidding. Three on three soccer, I think the wives kick the husbands' butts. In three on three soccer. Let's set this up. So let's I think go. It'd be basketball. It's it's a little hard because yeah. the, the guys are big. Connor Harding's just gonna post up. Yeah, it's not all about skill. Yeah. It's about. But if we did like a it's, three point shooting it's about, contest oh, or something, you know what I mean? Paisley would win the three point. Legit. Yeah, Paisley would win the three point Legit. shooting contest. No question Love about it. it. So, all right. Our cup. <laughs> all right, coming up, the carnage uh, continues on the double down picks. You guys were not. <laughs> was, you guys were not good. It was bad. From Jason. And Paisley Harding is in studio, fresh off her 30-piece versus San Fran. Oh, the Cougars are crushing it right now. This is BYU Sports Nation. Don't you just miss the good old days? Back when you thought being an adult would be the greatest thing ever. But then, before you know it, you have car payments, student loans, credit card debt. That doesn't even include the mortgage. That's when my loan officer suggested a debt consolidation refinance. And just like that, I'm debt-free, and I'm on track to pay off my mortgage in just 11 years. Take back control of your adulthood! Hey! Find out how he did it at intercaplending.com slash debt-free. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine. 
be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the newest Deep Blue podcast, Jerem Jordan talks with men's golf coach Bruce Brockbank about taking over for the legendary Carl Tucker, maintaining the high standard of excellence for the program, and what the Big 12 means for the Cougars. Listen to it on BYU Radio app and where podcasts are found. Fun conversation with Bruce. I asked him too, are you wearing a hat constantly as a, as a golf coach and, and player, just golfer? Always. He's amazing. Always wearing. One, one day, Robbie Bosco and I were out at Riverside, and we were just going out, and he was coming in. And we said, come play with us. And he was carrying his bag. He'd been out with the guys. He's like, oh, I'm so tired, you guys. And we said, just come out. It was just a couple holes. So he comes out, and he, th- he goes, birdie, 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 birdie. And then he's like, I, I think I'm going to keep playing. Now he carries his bag. He ends up playing 18 holes with us and shooting 69. <laughs> He carried, he'd already That's been amazing. out playing. And it's like, he kept going, well, maybe I'll Still play one it. more. He just, he, he played lights out. So Still got it. He, not only can he coach, dude can play. Speaking he of. And scrape it around. Speaking of, our next guest, fresh off a 30 piece against San Francisco. They didn't see it coming. Paisley Harding joins the program. Paisley, what's up? How you doing? Really good. Thank you. I'm waking up. It's early, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> Did it, you have it, to it, get up early to come in with us? I actually did kind of. Man, I, it's super nice being a fifth year. Student. Yes, I was gonna say yes. Monday mornings. You're a veteran. Yeah, like, like, like freshmen will be like, you know what I need in 8 a.m. class. It's like, yeah. you know what you yeah. need is to not schedule 8 a.m. Exactly. You need less ambition. That's yes. what I say. Um, so it's good to be a fifth year senior. Okay, uh, let's talk about Saturday. 30 points. Um, what was that like? When in the game where you're like, hey, this is one of those. This is one of those days. I think so. Like walking in after warmups, I was talking to Lauren. She's like, how are you feeling? We always ask each other how we're feeling that day um and I was like I feel really in rhythm I feel good so I don't know I guess it just turned into my day I don't know it felt really good now you scored like 25 when we had uh you know a, a, an earlier game and we had an interview with Kristen with you and we, we kind of you know tampered with that special pregame time and we thought did we tick her off she went off for 25 <laughs> do we need an interview every game the answer is no right <laughs> um <laughs> You know what? That was really sweet. I was kind of surprised, though. I was like, I got to be shooting. I got to warm up. But um, we fit it in. It was totally fine. Thank you. That it's was no nice. Pro- it yeah. was no problem at all. A was, special time, though, right? It really was. Yeah, no mess. It was a special time. but you messed, but you still delivered. What's it like out there? So 30-point performance. It seemed to me, I'm watching the game, I'm going, Paisley's not, she's just going to miss. <laughs> does the rim feel huge? I mean, what, what does it feel like out there? Do you just feel invincible at that point? I kind of did. I don't know. There was a stretch there where I think I took like three shots in one possession. I was like, okay, I got to chill out. That's a heat check right there. (laughs) Literally pass the ball, get some assists. Come on. But um, yeah, I don't know. The hoop did feel big. Um, My shot felt really smooth. I was throwing things up there and they're going in like in people's faces. I was like, wow. I guess it's my night. I don't know. It yeah. felt really good. 99 points, another blowout win. Um, were you hoping for 100? I didn't even see the score. Like, I don't know. That's so. Sometimes we'll, like, look at it when we're on the bench and stuff like that. But I mean, when our girls, after our girls were up and, like, made the lead even bigger, I was like, we're rolling them. Like, I didn't even notice that we were at 99. But I just want all my teammates to score. So I was really hoping Kate would hit that three. It was right there. But... Next time. Okay. Next it's time. all good. Yeah, this team seems to have, you know, we call it killer instinct or whatever it is. In this in this game uh, Saturday, kind of trading baskets j- just for a short period of time. Then all of a sudden, it's like you guys put the foot on the gas and just separate. And that point comes in, in every game. What, what makes this team so special where just at some point you make your minds up and separate and then it's over? Yeah. I mean, for us, uh, we just say continually, like, it starts on the defensive end when maybe we're not hitting shots because there's been some games where we've started the game and we've only hit – actually, we haven't hit anything. Like, the score is 0-0 with, like, five minutes to go in the first quarter. And we're like, okay, we got to pick up our defense. Let's get some steals. Let's get some fat sprigs. That's what's going to open up the game for us, and usually Mm. that's what gets us started. Um, So the defense defensive end really is, like, huge for us. Plus, we just continued to get stops. Like, that – that lead kind of happened in the first quarter because we got stops. 
We didn't let their bigs get shots. We didn't let their shooters get shots. So we we really took them out of the game. San Francisco's got some talent, man. And uh, now you embrace what's going to be probably the toughest week of the season at Portland, who's tremendous. And then, of course, at Gonzaga, who's the rival, yes. um, you know, and, and they lost a lot of peace from last year, but still good. Still mm-hmm. good. Um, what's it like to be top 10 in net right now? That's pretty wow. cool, right? Yeah, this I don't. I can't think of a better season to go out on. Like BYU has given me so much, and then this team has given me even more. And I don't know, being ranked for so many seasons, being here or so many weeks, sorry, and yep. being um, today will be, I think, the BYU record. I know that's weeks. amazing. Like yeah. we're just setting records and making history, and that's like all I want to do. I want to have my names up in the rafters, the number of our year up there. I don't know. It's been amazing. It's been super special so far this year. And, and how, so how do you get ready for – you guys have not really been challenged. And a lot of times it's – To weird. your credit. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you but, did but, that. But, yeah. but the, now all of a sudden, same thing happens on the men's side with Gonzaga all the time. Everybody starts going, well, man, if they're not challenged, like what's going to happen when they get challenged? So here comes here comes uh, Portland and, and Gonzaga. Portland with my niece, Alex Fowler, on that team. That's not – that's not Really? Actually, I didn't know that. That's not actually that. true. No, oh. she's not my niece. I told her she was last. Just because oh. Fowler. She she's from Australia. Okay. No, like <laughs> I was like, wow. No, she was. <laughs> you have you a know, really good name. Oh my gosh. You know my family. You know we have yeah. athletes. But no, from she, Australia. when she was tearing it up in the tournament last year, we were doing the tournament. And I said, Alex, I'm Blaine Fowler. I'm your uncle from up here. And she and she looked at me. She goes, really? And I go, no, not really. You're just oh deceiving but, everybody. But I was like, but if you keep playing like this, I'll claim you. <laughs> yeah. So, no, but she's playing great. She, she's averaging 18 and, and eight um, this season. <laughs> this is a talented team. Maybe the best team you guys have seen in a while. How do you prepare when you've really just been manhandling uh, teams to, to maybe have a game that's a little more competitive here this week or a couple of them? It's interesting. Um, I've never felt more focused going into games with my team than this year, which is bizarre. Because Why is that? We have, we know what we're doing. Do you know what I mean? Like we As know what we want group? to do. Yes. We know what we want to do. We know what we're, what our goals are. And so I think just going um, into every single game, like Tegan and I sit next to each other um, in the locker room, and she's like, I'm kind of nervous. And I'm like, me too. And we're like going and beating teams by 40. I, I don't know. It's it's just a different side so, uh, sense of edge that we hmm. have. I don't know if it's our coaches that are bringing that in or us girls just as a team. We're like, we have a job to do, and we want to get the bench in. We want to, like, do well. We want to play, so maybe we don't always want to get the bench in. Just kidding, girls. I love you. <laughs> um, no, I'm just totally kidding. We always want We always want to have the whole team play. So, um, I don't know. This has been – we're getting so much experience for our reserves right now that, like, if anything happens, if anything were to happen in the tournament – Later on in the season, like we have people to step up, and they're really good. It reminds me of 2020 football, honestly, where it was like BYU was blowing out fools, and then the backups were getting experience. And then this year in 21, it was like, well, we've played before, and now we're playing a tougher schedule or whatever. That was awesome. Over the weekend, there was a really fun Twitter conversation, which we just talked about on the show with, with Jaron Hall and Connor, your husband, and Jackson Clough. Uh, what did you think of this interaction they had about their wives and how awesome they are athletically? I loved it. <laughs> I think Jaron's awesome. Um, and breathe. They're in our ward. Oh, that's right. They have fun. a beautiful right. baby girl, mm-hmm. Jada. Um, but yeah, that was so fun. And then Connor's like, I'm going to bring in Jackson Clough because Jackson and Kayla just got married. Yep, they're now and in the group. Yes, they're now <laughs> in the group. They've entered the chat. They've entered it. So I don't know. It, it was so cute. I, I don't know. I think it's so important to um, just our society to see men supporting women. So I don't know. I really appreciated, the, appreciated that from all of them because they know they have some pretty cool wives. They get it. Yeah, well, they and, get I, it. and I like that in that text stream, they actually admitted that they, in, in the words that we always use, they outkick their coverage big time. Because oh, okay, which, which one of them said, yeah, how did we trick them? <laughs> how did those three Jackson actually... Jackson did. Yeah, Jackson said, how did we <laughs> trick them into marrying us? I, I'll tell you what, I, 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 when I'm not doing this, I have a company that sales people. I want all three of them on my team because I know they can sell if they got the three of them. <laughs> These guys, can, these guys can That's sell. Good. They're way over their heads. I'll tell you that <laughs> That's right awesome. now. That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the, the team. And you're 18-1, and one and you're ranked, and you're top 10 in net. Like, wh- wh- where's the mindset of the team? As you said, we want to do things. We want to be an all-time team. I think right now you still have to validate it in the postseason, but right now this is the best team BYU's ever had. What's that like? And, and what's the conversations 
conversation like to make sure you cement that in the postseason? Um, just to go off your like first question, Jetty always since I've been here, Jetty's always said, "Well, this player did this, and she was amazing." And she, like you just can tell, Jetty ha- knows his players, and mm-hmm. he knows like who's the best rebounder, who's the best shooter, whatever, who's the best a- assist. You know, I, so I'm like. We're going to be that. When other teams come in, we're going to be that. We're going to be that team that he talks about. I don't know. So uh, just growing up in this program, it's been cool to see, like, what I've come into because I've grown so much as a player in, like, in this program. I wasn't dropping 20 points in high school. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that's been crazy. And just to cement it for the rest of the season, like, it's that focus. It's that drive. Like, every single day at practice, like, I think Jetty's spoken on it before, but we're always wanting another rep. Like, we understand where mm. our bodies are at. Us, us seniors, we understand where our bodies are at with how much we should go, how much we should maybe take off. Like, and Jetty's really good about um, speaking to us and having that conversation with knowing where we're at. So, um most of the time we're just like, okay, Jetty, one more. We want to get this right. Like, we're not leaving practice till we get this right. So it's not only our coaches holding us accountable, but it's ourselves as well, which, I don't know, I think that's such a great focus that we have. Tegan does a great job of that. That's special. Yeah. It really is, because most people just want to get out of there. Well, right? and, th- and this team, I mean, physically, I watch them, and, like, you have great bigs, you've got great guard play. Like, this team doesn't seem to have a weakness, but what makes great teams are, are – the ability to mentally be really tough, and it sounds everything you've talked to us about today leans to man. This team physically or physically is good, but mentally there is an edge there and a competitiveness there. Mm-hmm. Who knows what's the ceiling for this team? I don't know if there is one. All right, I really don't Keep know. Going. I mean, I, I, we've, I've, my team has impressed me already with what I thought this season, how this season would go. So. I don't know. I think I don't know if there's a season for, or a ceiling for us. I mean, keep it going. It's amazing. We've been through so much together, especially just with um, COVID last year, and that's yep. built so much character with like being around one another, having fun on the bus, like everything. So, and then and then we had the opportunity to bring in six new freshmen, which I think that's like a challenge in itself with figuring out how to bring people in because we didn't do have to do that last year. We didn't have any freshmen last year, so. And I think that's a lot of building for us upperclassmen, too, and it's been so fun. Well, congrats so far on the season. No it's, ceiling. I say I say yeah. we follow you guys right to the Final Four. Let's just keep, keep it going. Keep having you on. Let's just let's keep just it keep rolling. Going. Right? Yes, I love okay, it. Okay, and good luck right. this week at Portland at Gonzaga. Huge week. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, Congratulations on what's happened so far, and just keep it rolling. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Paisley. Coming up, rise and shout out to a great season for some former Cougars. And who had the worst week, the, the uh, men's team or us in Double Down Picks? It was a really tight competition. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Day. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. (laughs) With the free BYU TV app. I like it. Describe what the well symbolizes in six words. When you're down, keep on wishing. That crazy well brings hope to the 
hopeless. Help others feel better. Wishes, Ireland, and mystery. Life changing. The well symbolizes hope. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app. Or download the podcast. You just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, review the show. Got to do it all. Let's review the double down picks. They were bad oh, uh, for Pacific. Number one, I said Pacific scores 59 or less. It's only off by 17. Oh. Number two, oh. someone will foul out of the game. <laughs> just, just Why did you pick that? Absolute board out of that. Gideon George, T. John Lucas were close. They had four, but uh, no point. It's because you're so far ahead, you're just picking nonsense. Yeah, I'm just bored of it. So, yeah. Okay, well, I'm representing Spencer right now, and he said BYU will lead by eight plus at the half. Nope. BYU trailed by five at the half. <laughs> and then he ah. also claimed that Foose would have his fourth straight double-double. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> no points for Spencer. Foose had three points and seven boards. Now, in game, so. now he might have had one at in and out later. We don't know that. Maybe. He might have had one. You think? Does that count? That does not count? Does not count. Uh, Jason, count. Uh, BYU will not lose. No. Uh, Number two, BYU win the turnover battle. What is this, football? Uh, nope, it was 14 to 10. So and, and had we went 0 for 6. At 18 the day before, the game before, not good. Crap, we not suck good. again. Yeah. yeah. 0 for the week. It was an 0 for We're week. paid professionals. so bad. Yeah, uh, standings remain. I'm up uh, 13 on Spence. And Jason slash Dave have five. We still throw that out. Uh, our question of the day. <laughs> so bad. Do you believe a two seed in the West Coast Conference tournament is still possible for Brigham? Our lead voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Oh, Dave McCann. Hello, Dave. Hello, Dave. Uh, anything is possible once they start playing better. Really? It's, that's that, almost that was like, the lead voice of the like day? That's almost like Willy Wonka. Like, you should, hey, if you, you should want... never ever doubt what nobody's really sure about. That's pretty good. Same, same kind of thing, so... So. That's pretty good. Okay, today's Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Who gets one from you? Uh, from me? I'm going with somebody that just came on the show with us, and that's Paisley Harding. Oh, she's she great. She drops 30, 5 of 7 from 3, and 11 of 17 from the field. She was feeling it. My shout-out goes to Paisley. 17 shots. That's what's up. Uh, to the BYU NFL guys, good job, good effort getting to the championship game. We're hoping for a couple Cougs, maybe uh, several Cougs, at least one we're hoping for. Um, in the Super Bowl, not happening, unfortunately, but uh, all good. Courtney Wayman, sixth fastest collegiate time ever in the 3K. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's amazing. Awesome. Our thanks to today's guest, Tyler Hawes, and the aforementioned Paisley Harding. And, and I'm so sad. Dennis Pitta, again, we couldn't get him on. You Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran One out of time. Enough, I guess. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Blaine, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Augustine Ambrosino. See you tomorrow for more BYUSN. Go Cougs!